Last year for my 40th birthday party, I threw a $160,000 rager. Now, with that said, if I had my 30s to do over again... Hey, Kayala. What, Sam? What if I told you I had a way to get you back to your 30s? Yeah, okay. Suit yourself. Where is he going? Wow, I guess he wasn't kidding. Whoa! What happened, man? Didn't you give yourself some good advice? Well, I took some time to uh, enjoy the things I missed out on, and apparently some of that stuff should have been skipped. Yeah. Anyway, if I could do my 30s over again, here's three major things I'd do differently. Joining us is my man, Kiala Kanai. Kiala Kanai takes entrepreneurs on a journey to grow their business. He has done over $75 million in revenue. If I was in my 30s again, one thing that I'd do differently is invest in higher level business skills. It's no secret that I spent a lot of time in my 30s investing in learning marketing and sales. And it paid off. I mean, my business today has done over $100 million in revenue in the last six years or so. At the same time, I was so narrowly focused on the money making skills that I didn't realize that there's some higher level business skills that are necessary if you wanna grow a real enterprise. For example, I didn't know anything about hiring, firing, training, management, how to read a profit and loss statement or a balance sheet and I paid prices as a result of my ignorance as well. For example, in 2018, I went through an ugly partnership breakup that resulted in an eight month legal battle. Around that same time, I found out that my CFO, which is using the term loosely by the way, took out a million dollar loan in my name without me even knowing about it. My COO was stabbing me in the back the entire time and reporting everything to my business partner. I had a developer that stole over $240,000 from us. A development team made a giant mistake that cost us $600,000 in lost revenue. I had several people on my team stealing hours and dollars from the company. And I even had a friend of over nine years who was stabbing me in the back. Now, to be clear, I am grateful for all of these experiences. At the end of the day, they made me a better leader. And when we really see that life is always serving us, then we have the gift of being able to identify the hidden blessings in the apparent curses. So if any of those people were to walk in the door today, I would thank every one of them because ultimately they showed me my weaknesses so that I could learn the skills necessary in order to accomplish my mission. Now, with all that said, had I invested in higher level business skills earlier, I likely could have saved myself a lot of drama. Another thing that I might do differently in my 30s is hone in my focus even more. Now, if you've watched my content anywhere on the internet, you've probably seen that I talk about the value of focus a lot, and it is something that has served me very well. And at the same time, even I have room for improvement. And that's because it can often be very challenging to stay focused as an entrepreneur, because entrepreneurs are typically, as a byproduct, very creative types of people. Now, if you go to Google right now, you'll see that the average millionaire has seven income streams. That's really asking the wrong question. The right question is how did they become a millionaire, not what are they doing as a millionaire? Because oftentimes, how somebody got to where they are is different than what they do once they've arrived there. So all of the millionaires that I know got there by staying narrowly focused on one thing and building that one thing up until the point that they had more money than they could possibly invest back into that one thing. And eventually, that meant that they had to diversify their investments and their income streams, which offers them the byproduct of minimizing their overall risk and exposure. Because as an entrepreneur, you're always gonna be exposed to risk. There can be risk from market conditions and market changes, regulatory bodies, key people leaving your organization, and many more threats that we don't have time to cover in this video. Now, the counterintuitive thing about staying focused is that when we say yes to something, it most often sounds like saying no to everything that is not that, which might sound easy at first, but it gets exponentially harder the bigger that you get. Think about it for a moment. If you're a hundred air, you only have to say no to hundred dollar opportunities. If you're a thousand air, you're saying no to thousand dollar opportunities. But when you're a millionaire, you're saying no to million dollar opportunities. When you're a deca millionaire, you're saying no to $10 million opportunities. A perfect example of this is recently my business partner and I had the opportunity to buy a software company. Our financial team 
poured through that company's books and ultimately arrived at the conclusion that if we continued doing what we were doing and were to buy that company, we could scale that over the next three to five years and potentially sell that company for 50 to 100 million dollars. My business partner and I ultimately ended up saying no to that opportunity because we realized that it would distract us from building a hundred million dollar a year organization, which is the goal that we have set for our company. So imagine having to say no to a 50 or 100 million dollar opportunity. Now that's the intensity a focus that is necessary to succeed and everybody could use an improvement on it. And lastly, if I had my 30s all to do over again, one thing that I might do differently is set aside more time for fun and adventure. Take that vacation, spend that time with family. I've been reading this book recently called Die With Zero by Bill Perkins and it offers an eye-opening perspective because a lot of people who are financially driven and, and money motivated tend to work hard and be on the grind and stockpile their money away and save up as if they're gonna to live to be 150. And the fact is that there are things that we can do in our 20s we're not gonna be able to do in our 40s. Things we can do in our 30s we're not gonna be able to do in our 60s, and so on and so forth. And all of us die many, many deaths before our body finally dies. What that means is that there's the last time that we're gonna do some of the things that we love doing, and most of the time we don't even realize that that's the last time that we're gonna do it. There's the last time we're gonna play golf, the last time we might go to the beach, the last time that we might you know, hang out with the kids and, and throw the ball, last time that we might go out dancing and have drinks with some of our friends. And so when we take the time to really realize that life is finite and that our physical ability to squeeze the most juice out of life is also finite and fleeting year to year, decade to decade, it really gives things perspective. And when I look back on my 30s, don't get me wrong, I do not regret any of the work that I did. I've worked very hard, I wanted to be financially independent, I wanted to be able to stock enough money away that work could become optional for me and I've done all of those things. And at the same time, when I look back, there's a few more adventures that I could have gone on that I probably would have enjoyed more in my mid-30s than I will in my mid-40s. And for that reason, I'm grateful that I'm reading this book and adding this perspective to my life because it helps remind me that there is getting more out of life versus just making more with the life we have. So listen, I hope you got value out of this video and maybe even a new perspective on a few things. And in case we've never met before, my name is Kyla Kanai and I went from working in a coffee shop like this just a few short years ago to building an online business that's now done over $100 million in sales. And I say that only so that you know that everything that I share on my channel comes from real world knowledge of things that I've learned and applied to help me get those results. And I share it here in hopes that it helps you create similar results as well. So make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell notification so you get notified every week when I drop more content like this. And make sure you watch this next video in the lineup. I'll see you there.